Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Inner Harbor, Chapter 6. It was like riding a bike. Or sex. Philip mused as he tackled, as he tacked, threading through the light traffic on the bay toward an available slip on the waterfront. It had been a while since he'd done any solo sailing, but he hadn't forgotten how. If anything, he'd forgotten how much he enjoyed being out on the water on a breezy Sunday morning, when the sun warm and the water blue and the wicked screams of gulls echoing on the air. He was going to have to start finding time for simple pleasures again. Since this was the first full day he'd taken off in more than two months, he intended to make the most of it. He certainly intended to make the most of a few golden hours on the bay with the intriguing Dr. Griffin. He looked over at the hotel, idly trying to calculate which window might be hers from what she told him he knew it faced the water, given her view of the life that pulsed there in enough distance for her research. Then he saw her, standing on a tiny balcony, her glossy mink-colored hair sleek back and haloed in the sunlight, her face aloof and unreadable from so far away. Not so aloof close up, he thought, replaying that their last sizzling of kiss in his mind. No, they'd been nothing and aloof in that long throaty moan nothing distant in that quick hard tremble her body had made against his that incentive involuntary single of blood calling the blood her eyes that water clear blue hadn't been cool nor had they been intriguingly remote when he lifted his mouth from hers and looked into them said they'd been just a little clouded just a little confused and all the more intriguing he hadn't quite been able to get her taste out of his system not on the drive home nor through the night not now seeing her again and knowing that she stood and watched him what he wondered do you observe dr griffin and what do you intend to do about it phil flashed her a quick smile snapped her salute to let her know he'd seen her then he shifted his attention away from her and maneuvered it into dock his brows lifted in surprise as he saw seth standing on dock waiting to scare the line what are you doing here expertly set looped the bow line out of the po over the post playing errand boy again there was a hint of disgust in the tone but seth had the work to put it in there they simmered down from the boat yard doughnuts yeah philip sat nibbly nimbly on the artery clockers <laughs> real people don't eat tree bark for breakfast seth near just you <laughs> And I'll still be, and I'll be still, I'll still be strong and good looking when you're a wheezing old man. Maybe, maybe, but I'll have more fun. Philip took Seth's ball cap off, patted him lightly with the pen spell on your definition of fun. I guess yours is poking at city girls. That's one of them. Another is hounding you over your homework. You finished Johnny Tremaine, Tremaine for your book report. Yeah, 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 Seth was like, man, don't you ever take a day off. What? When my life is devoted to you? He grinned at Seth Snort. So, what you think of it? It was okay. Then he jerked his shoulder. A purely Quinn movement. It was pretty good. Well, we'll put together some notes for your oral pour later tonight. Sunday nights are my favorite night of the week, Seth sighed. It means you'll be gone for four days. Come on. You know you miss me. Shit. <laughs> You count the hours until I come home. So that's barely suppressing him. Like hell. <laughs> then he did giggle as Philip snagged him. Ran away for a tussle. So Bill heard the bright, happy sound as she walked toward them. She saw the wide grin on Seth's face. Her heart did a long, slow roll in her chest. What was she doing? She asked herself, what did she hope to accomplish? How could she walk away until she found out? Good morning. Distracted by her voice. Phil's glance over, dropping his guard just long enough for Seth's elbow to slip through and into his gut. He grunted, wrapped an arm around Seth's neck and leaned down. <laughs> I'll have to beat you up later, he said as they were, when there aren't any witnesses. You wish! Flushed with pleasure, Seth settled his cap securely on his head and feigned disinterest. Some of us gotta work today, and some of us don't. I thought you were going with us, so Bill asked to Seth. Would you like to? I'm just a slave around here. Seth looked longly at the boat, then shrugged. We got a haul to build. Besides, pretty boy here will probably capsize her. Smart ass. Philip made a grab, but Seth danced leggingly out of reach. Hope she can swim, he called out and raced away. Philip looked back at the pill. She was not on her bottom loop. I'm not going to capsize her. Well, so Bill glanced toward the boat. It seemed awful small and fragile. I can swim, so I suppose it's all right. Christ. <laughs> Kid comes along and completely smears my rip. I've been sailing longer than the brat's been alive.
Don't be angry with him, huh? <laughs> Please don't be angry with him. I'm sure he was just joking with you. He didn't mean to be just disrespectful. Philip just stared at her. She actually gone pale, and her hand was nervously twisting the thin gold chain she wore around her neck. There was active and acute distress in her voice. So, Bill, I'm not mad at him. We were just falling around. Relax. Baffled, he rubbed his knuckles lightly over her jaw. Razzling each other is just our clever male way of showing affection. Oh, she wasn't saying whether to be embarrassed or relieved. I guess that shows I didn't have any brothers. It would have been their job to make your life a living hell. He leaned down, touched her lips lightly with his. His traditional... Stepped on the boat, held out a hand. After the briefest of hesitations, she let him take hers. Welcome aboard. The deck rocked on her feet. She did her best to ignore it. Thank you. Do I have an assignment? For now, sit, relax, and enjoy. I should be able to manage that. At least she hoped so. She sat on one of the padded benches, gripping it tightly as he stepped out again to release the lines. It would be fine, she sure so. It would be fun. Had she watched him sail on the port or dock or whatever you would call it, he'd seem very confident. Even a bit cocky, she decided the way he scanned the hotel until he saw her standing out on her balcony. There had been something foolishly romantic about that, she thought now. The way he had sailed across the sun-splashed water, searching for her, finding her, then the quick smile and wave. Her pulse had bumped a little. It was understandable in human response. It made such a picture after all the faded jeans and the crisp t-shirt tucked into them, as blindly white as the sails that glided, that gilded hair and the warm, tan, slick muscled arms what woman wouldn't feel bump at the prospect of spending a few hours alone with a man who looked like philip quinn and kissed like philip quinn though she had promised herself she wouldn't dwell on that particular town of his he'd shown her just a little too much of that skill the night before now with the sails lowered he motored gently away from the dock he found some security in the low rumble of the engine not that different from a car really she supposed this vehicle just happened to drive over water nor were they really alone her hands relaxed their desk up on the bench as she watched other boats skim and glide she saw a boy who was surely no older than seth tucked into a tiny boat with a triangular red sail it was an actively consi considered safe for children surely she could handle it always didn't sail she turned her head smiled absently fell like, what did you say watch he moved gracefully over the deck, working the lines, then suddenly the sails rose, snapped in the wind, filled with it. Her heartbeat skipped and scrambled, and her fingers tightened once more on the bench. No, she'd been wrong. She say, saw that now. <laughs> this was nothing at all like a car. It was primitive and beautiful and thrilling. The boat no longer seemed small or fragile, but powerful, just a little dangerous and breathtaking, very much like the man who capt captained her. It's lovely from down here. Though she kept her hands firmly locked on the bench, she smiled over Philip. They always look pretty when I watch them from the window, but it's lovely to see the sails from below. You're sitting, Philip commented as he took them home, and you're enjoying, but I don't think you're relaxing. Not yet. I might get there. She turned her face to the wind, tugged and teased at her hair, trying to free it from the man. Where are we going? Nowhere in particular. Her smile warmed and widened. I really have I really have a chance to go there. She hadn't smiled at him just that way before Philip thought without thinking, without weighing. He doubted she realized how that easy smile transformed her coolly beautiful face into something softer, more approachable. Wanting to touch her, he held a hand. Come on up here, check out the view. Her smile faded. Stand up? <laughs> yeah, there's no chop today, it's a smooth ride. Stand up, she repeated each word separately. And walk over there. On the boat, <laughs> two steps. He couldn't stop the ground. You don't want to just be a bystander, do you? Actually, yes. Her eyes widened when he stepped away from the boat. No, no. She stifled a scream when he laughed and snagged her hand. Before she could dig in, he pulled her to her feet off balance. She fell against him and held on in terror and defense. Couldn't have planned that one better. He murmured and holding her, stepped back to the wheel. I like getting close enough to smell you. A man has to get almost right here. He turned his head, nuzzled on his lips, on her Stop, thrills and fears, racer. Pay attention. Oh, believe me. He's got nipped her envelope. I am. To the boat. Pay attention to the boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but he kept one arm snuggling around with Look out over the bow. To port. The left. He explained. A little squash there. Goes back into the marsh. You'll see herons and wild turkey. Where? 
Sometimes you have to go in to find them, but you can catch sight of them now and then. The harem standing like a sculpture in the high grass to rising up from it. Turkeys bobbling their way out of the trees. She went out to the sea. She discovered she hoped she would see. Another month will have geese flying over from their view. This area wouldn't look much different from the Everglades. Her right was still jumpy, but she inhaled slowly. Exhaled deeply, deliberately. Why? The marshland. It's too far from the beaches for the developers to be very interested. It's largely undisturbed. Just one of the base assets, one of the factors that makes it an estuary. Finer one for watermen than the foyts of Norway. She inhaled again, exhaled. Why? The shallows, for one thing. A good estuary needs shallows so the sun can nourish aquatic plants plankton in the marshland for another they had the tidal creeks to cover the coves there he brushed a kiss over the crown of her head now you're relaxing with some surprise she realized she wasn't simply relaxing she already gotten there so you were appealing to the scientist took your mind off your nerves yes it did odd oh, she thought that he knew how so quickly with which switch to throw I don't think I have my sea legs yet, but it's a pretty view, still so green. She watched the passing of big leafy trees, the deep pockets of shadows in the marsh. They sailed by markets, markers topped with huge scuffy nets. What birds built those? Osprey. Now they're experts at the dissociation techniques. You can sail right by one with a sentinel's nest and it'll look right through you. Survival instinct, she murmured. She liked to see that too, and Osprey roosting on that rough circular nest, ignoring the humans. See those orange buoys? Crab pots. The workboat putting down the workboat putting down the gut that gut. He's gonna check his pots for bait over there to starboard. He nudged her head to the right. The little outboat outboard. Looks to me like they're hoping to catch some rockfish for Sunday dinner. It's a busy place, he commented. I didn't realize there was so much going on, on and under the water. He adjusted the sails and healing in, skimmed around a thick line of trees leaning out for, from shore. As they cleared the trees, a narrow dock came into view. Behind it was a sloping lawn, flower beds just staring at, starting to lose their summer brilliance. The house was simple, white with blue trim, a rocker set on the wide covered porch, and bronze-toned mums spread out all the rickety crockety tub so bill could hear the light drifting noise of music flowing through the open window choplin she realized after a minute it's charming she angled her head shifting slightly to keep the house in view all it needs is a dog a couple kids tossing a ball and a tire swing we were too old for the swings but we always had the dog that's our house he told her absolutely running his hand down her long smooth ponytail yours she strained wanting to see more where seth lived she thought stuck struck by dozens of conflicted motions <laughs> we spent plenty of time tossing bowls or each other in the backyard we'll come back later and you can meet the rest of the family she closed her eyes and squished the guilt i'd like that he had a place of mind the quiet cove with its lapping water and dappling shade was a perfect spot for a romantic picnic he dropped anchor where the ill grass gleamed wetly in the sky canopied in unbroken on autumnly blue overhead Obviously, my research on this area was lacking. <laughs> oh, Philip opened a large cooler and retrieved a bottle of wine. It's full of surprises. Pleasant ones, I hope. Very pleasant ones. He smiled, raised and bro. The label on the wine, he very pleasant. <laughs> he struck me as a woman who'd appreciate a fine, dry, certain charade. You're very astute. Indeed, I am. From a wicker hamper, he took two wine glasses and poured. Two pleasant surprises, he said, and tapped his glass there's. And are there more? He took her hand, kissed her finger. We've barely started. Setting his glass aside, he unfolded a white cloth and spread it on the deck. Your table's ready. Ah, enjoyed herself. She sat. She did rise against the sun and smiled up. What's today's special? Some rather nice pâtés to to pate to stir the appetite to demonstrate he opened a small container and a box of stone weed crackers he spread one for and held it to her lips hmm she nodded at the front very nice to be followed by crab salad ella quinn <laughs> sounds intriguing and did you make it with your own two hands i did he grinned at it i'm a hell of a cook 
The maid cooks, has excellent taste in wine, appreciates ambiance, and wears his Levi's very well. She put him to the pate again. Relax now. The ground familiar and easily notated. You appear to be quite a catch, Mr. Quinn. I, I am indeed, Dr. Quinn. Dr. Griffin. She laughed in her, into her wine. And how often have you brought some lucky woman to the spot for crabs out El Quinn? Actually, I haven't been here with a woman since the summer of my sophomore year in college. Then it was a fairly decent Chabrisse chilled shrimp in Marine Tisadale. <laughs> I suppose I should be flattered. I don't know. Mariano was pretty hot. He flashed that killer grin again, but being callow and sore-sighted, I threw her over for pre-med student with a sexy lisp and big brown eyes. Lists do weaken a man. Did Mariana recover? Enough to marry a plumber from Princess Anne and bear him two children. But of course, we know she secretly yearns for me. Little <laughs> Bill, love, laughing, so Bill spread a cracker for him. I like you. I like you too. He caught her wrist, holding it as he nibbled at the cracker shell. And you don't even lisp. When his fingers continued to nibble at the tips of her fingers now, it wasn't quite as easy to breathe. You're very smooth, she murmured. You're very lovely. Thank you. What I should say, she continued to use her hand out of his. So, while you're very smooth and very attractive, and I'm enjoying spending time with you, I don't intend to be seduced. You know what they say about intentions. I tend to hold the mind. While I do enjoy company, I also recognize your type. She smiled again, just with a glass. A hundred years ago, the word rogue would have been, had come to mind. He considered a moment. That didn't sound like an insult. It wasn't meant to be. Rogues are invariably charming and very rarely serious. I have to jack there. There are some issues that I'm very serious about. Let's try this. She peeked in the color and took out another container. Have you ever been married? No. Engaged? She asked. She opened the lid and discovered beautifully prepared crabs. Out. No. Have you ever lived with a woman for a consecutive period of six months or more? With a shrug, took plates out of the hamper, passed her pale blue linen napkin. No. So we can theorize that one of the issues about which you are not serious is relationships. Well, we can theorize that I have yet to met the woman I want a serious relationship with. We could, however. She narrowed her eyes at his face as he scooped salad onto the plates. You're what? Thirty? One. He added a thick slice of French bread to each plate. Thirty-one. Typically, by the age of thirty, a man in this culture would have experienced at least one serious, long-term, monogamous relationship. I wouldn't care to be typical. Olives? Yes, thanks. Typical is not necessarily an unattractive trait. Nor is conformality. Everyone conforms, even those who consider themselves the rebels of society conform to certain codes and standards. Enjoying her, he told us that. Is that so, Dr. Griffin? Quite so. Gang members in the inner city have inter internal rules, codes, standards, collars. She had a selecting olive from her plate. In that way, they don't differ much from members of the city council. He had to be there. Philip Mama, excuse me? Nothing. What about serial killers? They follow patterns. Enjoying herself, she tore a chunk off of a slice of bread. The FBI studies them, catalogs, and profiles them. Society wouldn't term them standard, certainly, but in the strictest sense of the word, they're precisely what they are. Damned if she didn't have a point, he decided, found himself only more fascinated. So you, the observer, size people up by noting what rules, codes, patterns they follow. More or less, people aren't so very different cult to understand if you pay attention what about those surprises she smiled appreciating the question as much as she appreciated that he would think to ask most laymen she socialized with weren't really interested in her work they factored in there's always margin for error and for adjustments this is a wonderful salad she sampled another one and the surprise a pleasant one is that you won't would have gone to the trouble to prepare it. don't you find that people are usually willing to go to some trouble for someone they care for when she only blinked at him, he told her, said, Well, well, that threw you off. You barely know me. She picked up her wine, a purely defensive gesture. That's... There's a difference between being attracted to and caring for. The latter takes more time. Some of us move fast. She had seen her flustered. It would be, he decided, a rare event. Taking advantage of it, he slid closer. I do. It's already observed, however... However, I like hearing you laugh. I like feeling you tremble just slightly when I kiss you. I like hearing your voice slide into that dictated tone when you expand on a theory. 
That's the last comment she found. I am not that take <laughs> Charmingly, he murmured, skimming his lips over Temple. And I like seeing your eyes in that moment when I start to confuse you. Therefore, I believe I've crossed over into the care for stage. So let's try your early hypothesis out on you. See where that leaves us. Have you ever been married? His mouth was crushing just under her ear, making it very difficult to think clearly. No, well, not really. He paused, leaned back, and there was eyes. No, or not really. It was an impulse, an error in judgment. It was less than six months. It didn't count. Her brain was fogged. She decided to try an inch away for some breathing room. He only scooted her back. You were married? Only technically. It didn't. She turned her head to make her point, and his mouth was there, right there, to meet hers, to urge her lips to part and warm and soften. It was like sliding under a slow-moving way, being taken down into silky, shimmering water. Everything inside her went fluid. A surprise! She would realize later that she neglected the fact her in this particular pattern. It didn't count. She managed as her head fell back as his lips trailed smoothly down her throat. Okay. If he'd taken her by surprise, she'd done exactly the same to him at her sudden and utter surrender to the moment. His knee churned to the surface, thrashing there. He had to touch her, to fill his hands with her, to mold those pretty curves through that thin, crispy cotton of her blouse. <laughs> he had to taste her, deeper now, while those little hums of shock and pleasure sounded in her throat as he did, as he touched, and as he tasted. Her arms came around him, her hands sliding into his hair. Her body turned to fit itself against him. He felt her heart in time with his own panic punched through pleasure when she felt him tug at the butts of her blouse no her old fingers shook she covered it's too fast she squeezed her eyes shut struggling to find her show her sense of purpose i'm sorry i don't go this fast i can't was an easy check the urge to ignore the rules to simply press her under him on the deck till she was piling willing again put his tense fingers on her chin and lifted her face to his no it wasn't easy he thought again as he saw both desire and denial in her eyes when it was necessary okay no rush he rode a stem over her bottom lip tell me about the one that didn't count her thoughts had chattered to the edge of her mind. She couldn't begin to draw them together while he was looking at her with those tawny eyes. What? The husband. Oh. She looked away, concentrating on her breathing. What are you doing? Relaxation technique. Humor danced back and made him grin at her. Does it work? Eventually. Cool. He shifted under. He shifted until they were hip to hip and timed his breathing on hers. So this guy you were technically married to. It was in college at Harvard. He was a chemistry major. I shut. She ordered a toast relaxed in her archery shrinkers. We were barely 20 and just lost our heads for a short time. Eloped. Yes, we didn't even live together because we were in different dorms, so it wasn't really a marriage. It was weeks before we told our families, and then, naturally, there were several difficult scenes. Why? Because she blinked her eyes open, found the sun dazzling, something plopped in the water behind her, then there was only the lap of it kissing the hall. We weren't suited. We had no feasible plans. We were too young. The divorce was very quick and quiet and civilized. Did you love him? I was twenty. Her relaxation level was reaching her shoulders. Of course, I thought I did. Love has little complexities at that age. So spoken from the advanced age of what? Twenty-seven? Twenty-eight? Twenty-nine and counting. She let out a last long breath. Satisfied and steady, she turned to look at him. I haven't thought of Rob in years. He was a very nice boy. I hope he's happy. <laughs> and that's it for you? It has to be. He nodded, but found her story strange and sad said then i have to say dr griffin that using your own scale you don't take relationships seriously she opened her mouth to protest then wisely shut it again casually she picked up the wine bottle top of both glasses you may be right i'll have to give that some thought <laughs> end of chapter six